Aloha, I'm Charles Fasano. I'm, I'm the cinematographer, editor, and uh, I want to say director, but I know that I did not direct these animals by any means. This is my creation. Hawaii's Embassy Ohana is, is my opus. I'm here to tell you of some of the behind the scenes that went on in the creation of this film. Joining me is Joshua Lambus of J. Lambus Photography, a talented underwater photographer who was actually on a lot of these shots with me. He's a wonderful shadow diver of mine. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, I'm uh, super stoked. You know, I got to watch this film a couple days ago for the first time and really enjoyed it. I, just, I remember watching you shoot all of these clips um, for years before you even decided to make this film. You really just were doing it for fun and uh, for the simple fact that you love being in the water. I remember the few months you had when you decided you wanted to make this and kind of trying to figure out your format. I just wonder what your inspiration for putting this together to show to people was exactly. Uh, okay, yes, yes, that's a good question. My, um, what, I, what I set out here was to sort of make a film that's not a documentary. I'm not looking to create a film of, oh, we have to act now and we have to save the coral reefs and save the dolphins. No, this, this film is more of, of a throwback to the Jacques Cousteau days of, of uh, showing the aesthetic beauty of these marine animals and their every way, everyday workings and everyday doings. I also wanted to show the uh, connectivity of the reef system. Um, from all the small animals to, to the large animals, every creature in the reef system has its own role, from the fish to the invertebrates, and, and it's sort of their roles in society in building the reef as a whole. Now, the Hawaiians saw this, and they implemented the fish's roles in building the reef system into the Hawaiian culture and society. And they did it so much so that they actually wrote olelos, ancient proverbs, that assimilated everyday human life with the fish life. And that's and uh, that's how I wanted to present this movie, is to show the connectivity. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the select clips that I'd like to showcase for you that are from the movie and some outtakes from the movie. And just sit back again and relax and enjoy. Sounds good. Let's do it. Mahalo. Uh, now, Josh, this is my showcase sequence. I absolutely love this one. I have my video camera mounted onto my underwater scooter, and if you look at the animals that are presented here, they all look like as if they're cute. The pink-tailed triggerfish swimming above, the goatfish in a hunting party with the trumpet fish, and then the morio, the white-mouthed morio, out about swimming hunting also, with an omilu that comes right in front of my camera lens. Now, as I pull up to the chromas, there's a strike by an omilu with a second omilu. Yeah, I remember just being amazed when I saw that clip for the first time. It looked like he choreographed it. With this scene, Josh, what I wanted to show was just how important coral heads are to the protection of our marine animals on the reef. You can see how this coral head is surrounded. It's just in the barren sand, and we want to say that the sand is not having it, but there are sea cucumbers and peacock razor fish out there. But more importantly, on this one coral head that has four different types, four different species of corals, you can see how a community of bicolinantheas, um, damselfish, sea urchins, moriel, sea cucumbers are all hovered around this for the protection, and that's what the reef lends to the fish. Yeah, you know, I love this dive site. I've dove it hundreds of times, mostly with you. And uh, this site is known for its resident tiger sharks. And uh, it's pretty amazing how distracted you get by this little ecosystem here, constantly wondering what's over your shoulder. So. And I never dive uh, without a shadow diver at this dive site. That's for sure. It is a scary little place. And I don't blame you. Now, even the minute animals are equally important here in the reef system. So for me to be able to capture them, I had to utilize a macro setup like you see here with this Christmas tree worm. Now on a, on a side note here, funny note, the head of the animal is actually inside the tube and what you actually see here is its tail end. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> oh man, I remember this shot. This is the only time I've actually ever seen this animal and it was with you. Very rare. Or like uh, 95 foot or something. I remember letting ourselves go into deco just to get the shot and hang out with him because it's the first time we'd ever seen it. You know, five years of diving here on the Kona coastline, I've, I've only seen this twice, this animal. <clears throat> now, some animals don't mind it when I was filming them. This, this octopus was clearly out of this bull, and he's deep, 95 feet on pipe trees on a beautiful day, and I was filming with Amy and Mike, but he was just allowing me to sit there and, or float there and, and film him, knowing that he's pretty well camouflaged. You know, I love the curiosity of these animals. You can tell he's checking you out almost as much as you are him. Correct, and some animals, though, you can see, like, this octopus just did not want to be filmed at all. So much so that he actually uh, 
He actually flung his fecal matter at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's some. Uh, that's that's quite, I think some that's quite the statement. And then lastly, those are some animals that don't do, should not be bothered at all. This is a heavy stress, and I have to tell you, I do not recommend anybody doing this whatsoever. It is in the film just to show how much of our harassment it is strictly to the animal. And please, please, divers, nor clear if anybody enters the marine world, do not do this behavior. Now, if you saw in the film, there was a scarlet cleaner shrimp that uh, was uh, actually cleaning up a moray eel. Well, if you're good enough, you you could actually entice these animals to come up to you, and they'll they'll clean the dead cells and bacteria in and around your mouth and your tongue. It's it's a it's a funny feeling. It's quite tingly when they're doing this, but I gotta tell you, it's the freshest sushi out there. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, dental's a little expensive here in Hawaii. Uh. It, it does take a little while to gain these animals' trust and to get them to come up here and uh, do this to you, so that's awesome. It's a great shot you out there. Thank you. Now in this sequence, I wanted to showcase how at Two Step, there are known cleaning stations for Honu to visit. There are three of them at the south end. And this is a symbiotic relationship between the Honu that gets a clean shell and then the yellow tangs that get a free meal. Perfect little place to film these animals. They're, they're there uh, consistently. Beautifully stoic animals swimming around an area that pretty much made me decide to uh, become a diver here. I, I love this area for this reason and many more. Ooh, now when I, I remember when I first saw this animal hunting on the reef, I was really taken aback by the by the enormity of the size of this animal. You know, I completely agree. It's not often you see animals of this size moving about the reef. Really impressive. I found it really funny that while I was filming this uh, frog fish down at 110 feet, the Atlantis tourist submarine would come into my shot. And here are two faces that only a mother could love. And here's a good example of how a triggerfish diligently defends its nest. It's so funny to watch the triggerfish. People are so concerned about sharks and eels, but triggerfish probably bite more people every year than both of those animals combined. It's a good thing they don't have bigger mouths. Now while I was filming this, I was absolutely amazed by the number of white bar surgeon fish that were in this feeding aggregation at Pavai Bay. Yeah, I know this archway actually. There's oftentimes a white tip reef shark that lives within and around it. Now, these tinker butterfly fish are very popular in the aquarium trade, unfortunately, because they're really beautiful. But unfortunately, they're deep water fish that just really do not survive well in very shallow home tanks. You know, I usually find these fish deeper than 100 feet. Uh, I'm really impressed in the vibrancy of color you got off the reef here. How, how did you capture that? The magic of white balance. I'm not going to give away all my trade secrets, Josh. <laughs> oh, man. I, I remember when I saw this clip. I can't believe this animal came so close to you. You know, I've been searching for it for years over the reef, and it just never comes as close to shore. Yes, I was very really lucky. I've been searching for this animal just as long as you have been, Josh. Yeah, I mean, to see it like this is just unheard of. Awesome. Awesome. Now, what a shame I wasn't able to get this uh, particular shot, because I had four manta swimming in a line, but to try to swim backwards with them and, and to capture this footage, it just was too difficult, and uh, it just turned out to be a little bit too shaky. With how often we see them at night, it's such a pleasure to get to see them during the day. And if I'm not mistaken, that's my favorite manta, Koei, right there in the lead. Right in the lead, right in the first one. You know, mantas are nice and graceful, but every now and again they do, uh, they do make mistakes, like this one here that bites my camera. Oh, <laughs> nice. Now all the clips that you saw in Hawaii's MSC Ohana were filmed on the west side of the Big Island of Hawaii, but the Hawaiian monk seal sequence, we had to actually go out to Niihau. Josh and I went there about two summers ago, which is the, the forbidden island west of Kauai. Yeah, you know, Charlie, I know you've done a lot of diving off the Kona coast, but this was my first time and I absolutely loved the diversity. Now, normally dolphins are very fluid animals in the water, but this one was acting a little bit frantically, but I think he was methodically trying to get this leaf off him that stuck to his abdomen. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it looks like he's in total control of that leaf the whole time. I don't know if he was really stuck to him. 
Oh, you, you're thinking that he's wanting to keep that leaf there and is trying to get it off of there, Josh? Absolutely, I would think so. I mean, hmm. he looks like he has complete control the whole time. Yeah, he was methodically trying to roll that leaf off of him, but I think we might agree to disagree on that one. Now, in this scene, I don't recommend mimicking the snorkeler in any way. She illegally tries to touch this dolphin. You know, seeing this is appalling, I absolutely agree. Uh, now, this was a stellar day of diving that you and I uh, had, Josh. Um, this is the Akuli ball I was sitting off the Sheridan K and you can see how this scene where the, the cleave of the ball is happening in the center, and it's, it's cleaving because you are actually in the center of these fish. There you are on your scooter. Yeah, you know, it was a ton of fun getting to move through and free diving through these animals. It was really cool to be so encompassed by this ball of animals. I was actually amazed at the amount of breath hold that you had. I mean, this scooter really helps out because you can see you're not exerting a lot of energy. It easily took my breath hold from less than a minute to well over two or three. You know, a funny fact about swimming in, in, in a bait ball is, unfortunately, there's a lot of fish.